Today, uh, as you know, is the first Sunday of the month, and every first Sunday we take our first fruits. And, uh, and so I decided that I should uh, preach on, on the first fruits and what it means to us and the scripture foundation for what we have done. Because it is when we are conscious that what we have done is of faith that we receive the blessing of the Lord. Amen? And so my message today is titled, Offering the First Fruits. Offering the First Fruits. When we started our church, most churches uh, used uh, tithes and offerings to describe what they give to the Lord, and the tithe was very big for for churches, and, and everybody talked about tithing to the Lord uh, and, and, and all of that. But uh, right from the onset of our church, uh, we use the phrase first fruits in place of the tithe. And so if you've been part of the church, you'll realize that uh, you don't hear very much about tithing in this house. You hear more about giving generously, and you hear about, fair, about first fruits. And so for, for those of you who are new in the church, you may come in uh, on a day like this and we say we're giving our first fruits and you're wondering, what is that? Uh, is that tithing? Uh, and why do we call it first fruits? Why don't we call it tithing? Uh, does this church believe in tithing? Uh, if you are, uh, you've been here for a long time, you know that I've spent time teaching on this. But you know, people join us all the time. New people come to church and they see us do things and they want to wonder uh, why are we doing it, what's the basis of it. So I decided that I would uh, use this occasion to teach on tithing, uh, on first fruits, sorry, and, uh, uh, and, and why we call it first fruits in our church. Now, establishing a biblical principle goes beyond uh, something that is written in the Bible. You know, sometimes people say, the Bible says. And it's good to say the Bible says. But the Bible says it's not just a verse in the Bible says. If you say uh, uh, you want to find anything based on a verse in the Bible, you'll find a verse for it. There is a verse that will make you marry a thousand women if you want to. Uh, there is a verse that will make you eat a lot of food if you want to. Uh, there is a verse that will make you kill your enemies if you want to find such a verse. Looking for a biblical doctrine is not just finding a verse. Because the biblical truth is the same. It must run through the fullness of God's revelation from Genesis right through the Bible. That's how we establish biblical uh, foundations, and that's how we establish the truth of the Bible. So for somebody to say, this is biblical, it has to go beyond one verse is saying it. It has to be the full counsel of God. The full counsel of God. And, and that is the approach I take when I'm teaching the Bible. I go beyond just this verse says and that verse says to try and teach uh, the full counsel as it is expressed in the Bible. So, every giving, every offering that we give, whether we call it a tithe, we call it first fruits, we call it Thanksgiving offering, building project offering, whatever offering we give must have a foundation. And uh, if you've been uh, in this church for a while, you know that I always go to the book of Genesis to find my foundation. That's why it's called Genesis. It's the book of beginnings. And so in the book of Genesis, you find the beginning of all biblical doctrine. The doctrine of God, it's in Genesis. The Holy Spirit is in Genesis. Redemption is in Genesis. Blessing is everything finds its foundation from Genesis. And from Genesis, we build up Christian doctrine. So we go to the book of Genesis, chapter number four. Genesis chapter four. And verse number four. Now Genesis chapter four, verse four, uh, records the first acceptable offering in the Bible. The first acceptable offering. 
not the first offering. The first offering is Cain's offering, which was not accepted by God. And secondly, Abel's offering, which is accepted by God. So if you want to find out what is the kind of acceptable offering, what kind of offering does God accept? How does God want me to give? What is the kind of blessing that, uh, offering that God blesses? We have to go to the first one. And from the first one, you build your doctrine. There is uh, uh, the study of biblical interpretation is called hermeneutics. Everybody say hermeneutics. Say it one more time. Hermeneutics. One, one of these days, just use it in a sentence. And just say, I'm a hermeneutical student of the Bible. You will impress people when you say things like that. Hermeneutics, it, 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 it establishes the rules for interpretation. And, and one of the rules of interpretation is the law of first mention. That means that the first time a subject is mentioned in the Bible, it sets out God's original thinking of that subject. The first time it's mentioned in the Bible. And so the first time we read about offerings is in Genesis chapter 4. And so it's establishing the the, the foundation of the principle of offerings. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. I read it again. Abel also also means somebody had done it earlier. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. That's something I want you to know. The Lord respected it. The Lord accepted it. The Lord said, this is the way an offering must be made. So, there are three words there I want you to pay attention to about Abel's offering. All of those words start with an F. The first one is flocks. Everybody say flocks. Flocks is where he took the offering from. That's where he took his offering from. He took it from the flocks. And, and the word flock is in the plural. The flocks meaning the animals he read. All the animals he read. So it, it just tells us that an offering comes from somewhere. You don't give an offering out of nothing. You get, it comes from somewhere. And for Abel, it was the work of his hand. What he was doing, he was, he was taking care of animals. And that's where he brought his offering from. Now, each one of us works somewhere. You may not be able uh, who takes care of animals. Uh, maybe you sell uh, fabrics or you sell cars or you sell or you, or you make chairs and tables or you work in a bank uh, and you pay the salary. That's your flock. That's where you work. That's the work of your hand. And an offering always comes from somewhere and it comes from the work you are doing. And that was uh, what Abel did. It came from the flocks. An offering always comes from somewhere. The second thing, uh, word that I want you to pay attention, is the word firstborn. Firstborn. It, it describes the kind of offering that he gave. The firstborn. Or, as the old King James says, the firstlings. He didn't give the secondborn or the thirdborn. Or the fourth born. He gave the first born. The first. Not the second. The first. So Abel establishes that the offering God respects comes from what we have worked hard for, our flocks. It must be the first. In his case, the first born. Not the second. Not the third. Not the fourth. Not the fifth. The first. Everybody say the first. And so he's establishing for us what God honors. It must be the first. The kind of offering you give must be the first. And I'll explain that a little further. And the third word we find with Abel's offering is the word fat. The fat. 
the fat describes the quality of the offering he gave. He gave of the firstborn and their fat. That means when he was giving the firstborn, he wouldn't look at a firstborn, uh, and if it is very big, he says, no, 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 this firstborn is too big. Uh, and so he'll push it aside and go and get a very lean firstborn. He gave the firstborn and their fat. He gave everything of the firstborn, the fat, everything to the Lord. So in Abel's offering, we learn where our offering must come from. It comes from the flock where we work. The kind of offering we must give must be the first, not the second, not the third, not the fourth. It must always be at the topmost. And then it must be qualitative. It must come with a fat. And these are the three very important principles that Abel establishes for us. And they establish the basis for every offering that we give to the Lord. It must be measured in this way. Now, if you look through the Bible, you realize that subsequent to Abel's offering, all other offerings uh, followed uh, the same process. Noah gave an offering later on, and he gave the same offering. When he came from the ark, he gave the first, and he gave the best to God. Abraham's offering uh, was the first. Every offering that God respected followed this principle. So the first fruit is not just a particular offering. It is the spirit, the attitude with which we give. Now, when you look through the Old Testament, the word first fruit occurs many times, but there are two different words that are translated as first fruits. You know, uh, most times we read the Bible in English or probably in, in, in one of the Ghanaian languages, or if you are French speaking, you probably read it in French. But the Bible, the Old Testament was not written in a Ghanaian language to begin with, or English or French. It was originally written in Hebrew, and that's why I take time to find the Hebrew roots of the English translation. So when we look at the word first fruit, there are two different words that are translated in the Bible as first fruits. In English, it says first fruits, but in the Hebrew, two different words may be used, which are translated as first fruits. The first one I want to consider is in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. We quote it a lot of times. A lot of times when we're taking our first fruits, we'll quote from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. You see that word there, first fruits. Honor the Lord with all your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Now, in the Hebrew, that word that is translated as first fruit is reshit. Reshit. It, it sounds, in, uh, when it's written in English, it looks like reset. Reset, but it's reshit. And in Hebrew, it means beginning. It means the foremost. Sometimes it means the most important. It is foremost in order of ranking. Reshit, beginning. It's a very important word in the Bible uh, because um, when you read the, the Bible, uh, you start from Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word that is translated beginning is reshit. But because it says in the beginning, it says bereshit. But in, English, in, in Hebrew is in, and reshit is beginning. So the beginning uh, means that which starts everything. That which starts everything is the foundational thing. It is the first thing you do. The first thing God did, he created the heavens and the earth. 
the first thing you do, you give your first fruits. Receipt. So the first fruit is something you do at the beginning. It's not something you do after. In other words, if I'm going to give my first fruits, I don't pay, pay all my bills and then I come and give the first fruit. If you want to honor God, you give that first before you pay all other bills because it is the rashid, it's the beginning. It is that which starts everything. And when you start with that, everything else is now dedicated to God. When you start with that, everything else is now dedicated to God. It is the rashid, the first fruit, the beginning and the foremost. But the rashid is not the only Hebrew word for first fruits. There is another Hebrew word. And by the way, before we even go to that, uh, when you read Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, uh, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom in all you're getting, get understanding. That word principal, you're finding Hebrew, uh, Proverbs 4, 7, is reshit. So reshit means something that is principal. It's the first. It's the first thing you do. Okay. Exodus chapter 23, verses 18 and 19. Exodus 23, 18 and 19. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning. Verse 19, really, what I want to focus on. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. But I want you to focus on verse 19. The first of the first fruits. The first of the first fruits. Now, the same word is here. Earlier, we saw the same word is Rashid, but there's a different Hebrew word that is translated first fruits here. And it is Bikurim. And it means that something that is uh, starts, but it also means it is ripe and it is ready. It is ripe and it is ready. In other words, uh, the first fruit is not something that is not well done or not well developed. It is ripe, it is ready, it is the first product. And that talks about the quality of the first fruit. It must be ripe, it must be ready. So for example, if you were living in those days and you were going to give your first fruit to God and your first fruit was from the mango tree, maybe you're a mango plantation uh, person and you're going to give your first fruit from the mango. You don't go and, and, and the first mangoes that came on are not ripe. You don't go and pluck them and give to God because the first fruit must be ripe and it must be ready. So it's talking about you being careful to give to God something that is of value, is qualitative and presentable. You don't bring unripe fruit to God. That's how they did it. You give of something that is ready, something that is qualitative, something that is presentable. So when you read these two uses of the word first fruit, you get the thinking of God concerning our first fruit and the attitude with which we must bring it. It must be the beginning, it must be ready and ripe. It's not the last thing you do. You know, interestingly, the, the government of Ghana uh, doesn't even wait for you to determine to give. Have you noticed that? The government of Ghana doesn't say, we trust you, oh, we love you, a good citizen, so we'll pay you your gross salary and, and you decide when to pay tax. 
now. The government of Ghana says, I don't trust you. So before I give you what is yours, I take first what is mine. And when you go to a shop and you buy and there is a tax added to it, whether it's a VAT or a sales tax or whatever tax is added, the government doesn't say, well, pay the price for the product and later calculate the tax and pay it later. No, it takes it from source. Because somehow the government understands it must be a receipt. It's the first thing you do. You must take it before any other thing comes through. But God did not tell the Israelites, I'm going to take the first fruits or the tithe or your offering by force. He never did that. He never said, I take it at source. He says, I give all to you, to you all the 100%. And then you determine in your heart what is the beginning and what is the best. And you, out of love and dedication and commitment in your heart, come and give me my portion. And that is why it is a test of where your heart is towards God. For the government of Ghana, Paying taxes is not a test. He doesn't test us. Doesn't even think we'll pass the test. But God says, if you truly love me, I'm going to test you. I give you everything and I watch what you bring back to me. But he says, if you're going to give, watch Abel and Cain. They both gave. One was not accepted, the other was accepted. An offering is not accepted simply because it is giving. And not every offering is accepted of God. And sometimes people say, I give and give and give and give and give and I'm not seeing anything. You have to understand and ask yourself, am I truly giving the way God wants me to give or I'm just giving anything by heart and hoping that God will bless me? God does not bless us simply because we gave. He blesses us because the attitude is right. It is the first fruit. It is the, from the flock. It is the first and it is fat. It is ripe. It is the beginning. It is the foremost. It's not the last thing you give after you've paid all your bills, paid everything, paid your landlord, paid everybody, and then you realize what is left over. Okay, God. Now I've done my best. Let's see what I'll give to God and give to him. You've given. And it's probably a very sincere giving. But it doesn't qualify. Because it wasn't first. It was last. You give first. You give the right. So. What should be our attitude when we honor God? Three things. Giving to God first. Giving to God first. Secondly, giving the first to God. You give God first and you give the first to God and you give the fat to God. The fat means you give qualitatively. It doesn't mean go and buy fat to give to God just means it has to be qualitative, it has to be the first, and you give to God first. The reason why in our church we don't use the word tithe, because the tithe came after this. And of course in Israel they gave a lot of offerings. They gave Bent offerings, they gave grain offerings, they gave sin offerings, they gave trespass offerings, they gave uh, peace offerings, they gave wave offerings, uh, they, 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 they were giving all the time. But the foundation of all the giving, they gave the tithe, they gave all of that. But the foundation was this principle. It has to be first to God. First in terms of the action, and it has to have the quality. 
whether you call it a tithe or a sin offering or a trans, uh, tr transgress offering, a uh, trespass offering, whatever it is, it must meet the test that Abel established with God. If you miss that test, you can give a thousand offerings it will not be acceptable to God. You know, when, when uh, we were kids um, and we we're going to church, our parents would give us money to give offering and uh, they would give us uh, uh, coins. Most of the time, those days, uh, coins ruled Ghana. And, and so you get a peswa and, and, and so and so forth, or maybe two pesos or three pence uh, to go and give the offering if they were in a good mood. And then sometimes they will say, oh, well, this week there will be harvest or there will be some extra offering giving. So the threepence that will be given, they break it into two. Not increase the threepence. The same amount you give, they divide it into two. If it's one peso, you do divide it into two half pesos. And for your information, there was a time when we were spending half pesos. And you can actually buy stuff with half pesos. Half a peso. So you get, they'll break it into two. Now what, what they've done, they've tried. It's like how most of you uh, do it. You, you, you decide, I'm going to give 50 cities. But because I know project offering is coming, I'll break it into two. You've, you did that today, didn't you? <laughs> I break it into two. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll, I'll give I'll, instead of uh, I'll give thirty for main offering and twenty for project offering. I still end up with my fifty. It looks like you've given a lot, but really, as we say in our vernacular, if you cheat Anansi, you've cheated yourself. If you're trying to cheat God, you're cheating yourself. You can you can play games with God, so it it has to be. Right. So let's look at the reward. The reward. And then I close. Proverbs 3, back to Proverbs 3, 9, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Verse 10 tells us what happened. So your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Two blessings. First is the blessing of enough. Your barns will be filled with plenty. That word plenty in the Hebrew means sufficient. You know, when we say plenty in Ghana, we don't mean sufficient. We mean a lot. But the word plenty there means sufficient. In, that, in other words, when you give, God will give you something sufficient. Enough. Give us this day our daily bread. Enough. What you need, God gives to you. That's the first level of blessing God gives to you when your offering pleases him. He gives you enough. Everybody say enough. But then he gives us a second blessing. More than enough. Because he says your vats will overflow. The word overflow there comes from the Hebrew word parats out of which we get the, the one we are uh, familiar with, Perez, means breakthrough. Breakthrough. So God says, if you honor me with your, with your first fruits, not only would you have enough, you're going to have a breakthrough. Your vats will break through. Your vats will overflow. No boundary can hold your blessing. Your blessing will cross walls. It will cross limitations. It will cross geography. It will cross nations. It will go international because you are overflowing. And today, today we just want to trust God that if we've given faithfully for each one of us, there will be enough for the month of May. I see some of you are quiet. I have a feeling you didn't give. <laughs> You're looking, I said, I said, and then I look at people's faces. I just realized. They're saying, Pastor, this blessing doesn't touch me. Okay, so I'll say it again. For those of you who gave your first fruits and will give. Yeah. And will give. God says. 
your bands will have enough and I, so I pray that in this month of May you will have enough there will be no shortage there will be no limitation there will be no time you say I need to do this and you don't have the money for it you will have enough everybody say enough say plenty I receive plenty I receive enough sufficiency that's the first blessing so if you need to pay fees today, you will pay it. You need to pay rent, you will pay it. You need to pay the bank, you will pay it. Whatever is enough, you will have it. And may you receive enough. May you receive enough. May you receive enough. For every need, no shortage. No shortage. No shortage. No shortage. No shortage. If it's a thousand, you'll get a thousand. If it's 10,000, you'll get 10,000. If it's a million, you'll get a million. If it's 10 million, you'll get 10 million. That is enough. But there is a second blessing. And I pray for you in this month that your vats will overflow more than enough. More than enough. Breakthrough on every side. Breakthrough on every side. Breakthrough on every side. Break through on every side. If you were held back, you would not be held back. Some of you have operated on tabletop. You will break through from tabletop. You'll get your own shop. Some of you have had your shop. You will break out from shop to supermarket. You have operated in tens. You break through into the hundreds. You break through into the thousands. You break through into the millions. You break through into the billions. In the name of Jesus, you will have enough, but you also have more than enough. I said you have more than enough. Whatever was considered your boundary, you will cross it. Whatever was considered your boundary, you will cross it. Whatever, whatever was your geographical limitation, you will step over it. And may the Lord open the nations to you. Everything that has determined to be a stumbling block, you will break through it. Your vats will overflow. Your vats will overflow. Your vats will overflow. There will be no limit. And so I speak the blessing of the first fruits over you. And may the Lord cause your faithfulness, which he has seen in heaven, to be rewarded here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Give the Lord praise, somebody.